So Paul, in, in chapter six of the e-book, you look at uh, Asian economies, China and India and so on. And um, you've got all this slowing growth in mature economies, thanks to the new normal. We're all pinning our hopes on Asia. Is that realistic? It is in a way, Will, but probably not in the way that most people expect. Where we are at the moment is this massive confusion about key terms. So people talk about, oh, well, OK, I might accept that we're seeing a bit of slower growth in the West than anything else, but it doesn't really matter because, after all, middle classes in China and India, there are so many of them, they're so wealthy, they will carry growth on. And what we can't sell in the West, we'll sell there. And so on. This will be a super cycle and so on. But it's not true. It's a factual issue. When people talk about middle income in China, for example, or India, what they talk about is people who are earning between two and twenty dollars a day. That's the middle income. In China, only four percent of the population earns over twenty dollars a day. Put it another way around, the minimum wage in China is six dollars a day. In the West, it's six dollars an hour. So, yes, there are opportunities because more people are moving into the out of, or into this middle income out of poverty, but it's not going to be a market for flat screen TVs and new spas and bars and all the things that we've been buying in the West because our GDP per capita and income are ten times what they've got. So it's just going to be very different. You mentioned China then. China's got some particular demographic issues, hasn't it? Can we rely on China to to fuel economic growth in the future? One of the stories about the new normal is the story of the demographic time bombs. So chapter five, we were talking about two thirds of all the population, all the people who've ever lived to be over 65 and out today. China, the demographic time bomb, is 400 million babies weren't born because of the one child policy after 1980. So you've got a really severe shortage of young people coming into the labour market. Now, the 1980, 400 million less, therefore, of course, wages are going up like mad because there just aren't enough people in the labour force. Secondly, no social safety net at all in China. So older people, who is going to look after them? Not many children. And then in, India's got a huge population. It's got better demographics than China, you might think, and good growth prospects. Can we, can we rely on India? Well, again, on the, on the face of it, and I do believe, lots of opportunities again in India, but again, not the type of opportunities that you think at first glance. The incomes in India are just over $1,000 a head. So really, very, very poor. John Richardson, uh, in the chapter, talks about the key word you have to associate with India is poverty. It is poverty. Right. No, yes, it's got, it's got the best demographics of any country, really, any country in the world. Um, very young population, so lots of opportunities. But you have to think about what are people who are earning $1,000, maybe $1,500, what do they want to buy? What are going to be their first purchase? An example, you know, people in India just buying for the first time a little sachet of soap. The kind of soap that you or I might pinch, if you like, from a hotel bathroom in the West, that they can now buy for one rupee. That's a very interesting market because of different blends of polyethylene. It's very interesting from a chemical company point of view, but it's not, not a flat screen TV. It's not advanced materials. It's clever, but it's, not, it's got to be cheap. Thanks very much, Paul. Thank you.